Do you believe now? This is a real race. Buckle up. Uh, This is real now. Half a game. Any given day, the Brewers can finally be in these brackets where if the playoffs started today, the Brewers, with another win and a Phillies loss, are on the right side of things. One week to go. Woo! I'm fired up. Let's go. Let's have some fun. You are Locked On Brewers, your daily Milwaukee Brewers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Good morning. It is Thursday, September 29th. The season is over in seven days. Next Wednesday is the end of the regular season. The Brewers split the series with the Cardinals yesterday. The Marlins come to town today. The Diamondbacks next week. The Phillies are reeling. The Padres finally lost on the day that the Brewers won. (sighs) Good morning. Vibes. (laughs) Vibes. <laughs> All right. I'm Dominic Catronio. I'm the post game host on WTMJ. I'm also the statistician on Valley Sports Wisconsin. I'm recording late at night, trying to bring the energy here. Brewers, they got it done. It got stressful. It got nerve wracking. It looked confusing at times. The offense did enough late. Devin Williams was awesome, but the real story you cannot ignore Brandon freaking Woodruff. We're going to talk about him. We're going to talk about the bullpen. Look, we got to address Matt Matt Bush, got to address Taylor Rogers, the high leverage look for this final week, uh, and get you ready for the Marlins here in just a second as well. The Brewers split the series in this two-gamer. Get this about the season series head-to-head with the Cardinals. They end up going 9-10, and 10, the Brewers do, against the Cardinals. So the Cardinals win the season series by just one game, by one game. I remember sitting in this chair in April after that opening series against the Cardinals telling you, This was going to come down to the last week. And yes, the Brewers ended up giving up the division to the Cardinals. But it's a great example of that. These two teams are so evenly matched. It is a coin flip, even with the Brewers not playing well. And if you want to sit here and say, oh, well, well, Dom, Arenado wasn't playing. Oh, Pujols wasn't playing. There have been multiple games in the regular season that one or either Goldschmidt or Arenado is not playing in the game. Pujols was barely playing against the Brewers in the first half. Yachty was barely playing against the Brewers in the first half. Michael is shoved. Quintana even shoved yesterday. He pitched very, very well. So uh, I don't want to hear any of that poo-poo take. The Brewers and the Cardinals are very evenly matched. They're very similar profile teams. Rely on the home run ball. When they don't get it, they don't have a lot of speed. The bullpen, the back end is phenomenal. Helsley and Gallegos. For the Brewers, it's Williams and it was Hayter and it was Bush. But now it's like getting to the back end is what's been the difficulty. And they have some great top-end starters. These two teams match up very, very well. Cardinals are a very good team. I tip my cap to them. But the Brewers, if they get into the playoffs, they're going to be facing the Cardinals. So don't feel like, all right, good, finally survived. No, you're going to see them again if you get in. So be prepared for that mentally. Cardinals are a very good team. And the Brewers got the job done yesterday, 5-1. to one. They did enough, not a, not a lot, but enough against Jose Quintana. And he has been one of the best pitchers in baseball. I was looking back in the second half. He's in the top four in ERA in the second half in all of baseball. I did not know that heading into the day yesterday. Good for him. But Brandon Woodruff, this is the whole point of this first segment here. Brandon Woodruff, man, sets a franchise record. Fourth straight game with double-digit strikeouts. His 18th game of his career. Mind you, Corbin Burns already set the record. He passed Ben Sheets earlier in the year. With his 20, uh, he's got 21 double digit strikeout games now. Well, Woodruff's got 18. And Woodruff now has the record of four consecutive double digit strikeout games, passing Burns and passing Giovanni Gallardo. That's some pretty damn good company if you're going to be on a Brewers pitching list. That's epic for him. And yes, he had one walk, but he had five hits, zero runs, all five hits, singles. Very low stress. Got out of jams when he needed to. Notice the adjustment that the Cardinals made. They started swinging earlier against him. They wanted to make sure they didn't get into deep counts, didn't get into those two-strike opportunities against Woodruff because they knew they weren't going to succeed. The changeup was just so beautiful tonight. It was the best I've seen his changeup. I mean, his changeup the last few starts has been incredible. In total, Woodruff had 19 swings and misses. Man, I wanted it 20 so bad for the note. But he had 19 swings and misses, six of them on the changeup. Nine of them on the four-seamer. And get this about the changeup. There were only nine swings against the changeup, so they knew it was coming. Like, they they weren't shocked when it came. He threw 14 total changeups. Nine of them were swung at. Six of those nine swings 
were whiffs. That's how nasty it was for him in this game. The, the changeup is such a great equalizer for him because his fastball, his four-seamer is straight, but he's got the sinker going back in the right direction. The slider has taken center stage as his main breaking ball to complement the, the changeup as of late, and he flashed a few more curveballs in this game. When, when Brandon Woodruff's doing that, he's a top-end starter, and he's a number one in any staff in baseball. The, Bo- the Brewers, of course, are spoiled, having Corbin Burns and Freddie Peralta, but look, if the Brewers make the postseason... The next day that Woodruff would start would be Monday, by the way, against the Diamondbacks. At least he's scheduled now. And if you count it out, the the wild card series would start on a Friday, which means if the Brewers get in and Woodruff pitches on Monday, Friday, game one of a wild card series in St. Louis would go to Brandon Woodruff. Sign me up. Ten more strikeouts for Big Woo. Brewers needed it. Six innings. They thought they were in good shape with the bullpen. More on that coming up in just a second. But Brandon Woodruff, have yourself a day. 13th win of the year. Since he came off the IL, listen to these numbers for uh, Brandon Woodruff. He has thrown the ninth most innings in baseball since coming off the IL on uh, June 28th. His ERA is phenomenal. His ERA sits at 2.34. He's got 103 innings over that span. He's got 130 strikeouts. Opponents are only hitting 204 against them with a whip of 1.02. The only guys ahead of him in most of these categories are Cy Young candidates. Sandy Alcantara, Shane Bieber, Zach Gallen, Tristan McKenzie. There's some great names on this list that Brandon Woodruff is right in the thick of. And he has been the most important player for the Brewers in the second half. He's going to make one more start, one more impact to this team. He's a guy I want to have the ball right now. And you do too. It's a whole lot of fun to watch him pitch. 98 pitches, 69 strikes. He did his job. Brewers should have given him a little more offense to feel a little more comfortable leaving with a two, with a one nothing lead. Uh, got the job done. Really technically a 2 nothing lead, actually, is when he left the game. But hats off, kudos, round of applause for Brandon Woodruff. Now let's address the elephant in the room, the bullpen. We're going to talk about Bush. We're going to talk about Rodgers. What's the future of high leverage coming up here for the Brewers? More on that in just a second. But I want to tell you that today's episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Guys, we all know that confidence can take you far in life. That's especially true in the bedroom. That's where Blue Chew comes comes in. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in a chewable tablet at a fraction of the cost. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part, it's all online. No visits to the doctor, no awkward conversations, no waiting in line at the pharmacy either. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped directly to your door in, of course, a discreet package. It's time to get off the couch and get back to work. They say there's nothing sexier than confidence, and Blue Chew can help you give the confidence where it counts. And we've got a special deal for listeners. You can try Blue Chew for free when you use the promo code Locked on at checkout. It's all one word. Locked on. You're going to pay a $5 shipping, and that's it. BlueChew.com. Promo code locked on. And you're going to get your first month for free. Again, BlueChew.com. And you'll see important safety information and details on the deal. Thanks to BlueChew. Matt Bush, another solo home run allowed. And he didn't blow the save, obviously. It got stressful there because he gives up the home run to. Andrew Kisner, back-to-back days with a home run for Andrew Kisner. Very odd to see for the Brewers giving up to him. Then the double to Ben Deluzio. Then the walk to, it was just a weird, weird inning. He gets the ground out for his only out, but he faced four batters in all. Just the ground out was his only out. Luckily for him and Devin Williams in the defense, only allowed one run. When I look at his game log for Matt Bush over his last couple of games, and I look at the cutter was the only thing he really trusted. So now it's back-to-back games. He's allowed a home run. It's now the third time this month he's allowed a home run in the game. He allowed two earned runs back on uh, the 13th against the Cardinals. That was the game that he opened in the bullpen day, and he exited with the groin injury. But since coming back from that groin injury, he took a week off. He's thrown a total of four innings over the span of five appearances. Four hits, three runs, two earned, two homers. Both homers are solo homers. But the other thing, too, that I worry, he's only got two strikeouts over those five innings. 
He's not getting the same swing and miss. The curveball's been kind of hanging a lot more as of late. His ERA has swelled as well. For, for Bush, you look at almost all the runs he has allowed as a Brewer have come on the home run. The first one coming against the Dodgers here back on uh, August 16th. So that one on August 16th. Another one against the, the Cubs here in uh, Milwaukee. Another one here against Pittsburgh. So that's three, four, five, six home runs allowed with Milwaukee after only allowing five in 36 innings with the Rangers. However, the ballpark uh, that the Rangers play in, uh, the ballpark in Arlington is what I'll always call it, but it's Globe Life Field. That's a big ballpark. It's a pitcher's ballpark. So he's still learning to his confines, but for leverage and what he was doing earlier in the year, it looked like he was going to be a massive piece of this bullpen. All of a sudden, you can't trust him on top of Taylor Rogers. So what does Craig Council left to do? He has to go to his closer in the seventh inning of a game. Seventh inning. Devin Williams gets the job done. In fact, Craig Council had so much trust in Devin Williams, they were okay with intentionally walking Lars Newtbar in order to face Juan Yepes because they knew Devin Williams, even with no margin for error, a walk in this game is tied. He was able to get the ground ball. I don't think they were even expecting the ground ball. They were just looking for strikeouts. They were looking for swing and miss. And Devin delivered with a ground ball double play, and what a double play it was. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. Colton Wong saving the day, and I have ripped his defense all season long. I will put a hand in the air. That was an epic play by Colton Wong. More on that a little bit later. But what do you do in this situation where we've seen this a lot? With a week to go, how many times is the starter going to go five? How many times is it going to be a bullpen day? When it's not Burns or Woodruff, you've been expecting, you know, all hands on deck, a bunch of bullpen arms. This is not sustainable. What are the Brewers going to do to fix that? If I look at today, right, Eric Lauer is getting the start. You need five innings out of him. You can't have a Cincinnati start. You need five innings out of him. Is Strezlecki the first guy out of the pen? Is Justin Topa the first guy out of the pen? What the Brewers really need to do, if you want to talk about what they really need to do with their bullpen, they need to get out to a big lead. They need to dominate this series against the Marlins. They are the better team. Now, Sandy Alcantara is pitching tomorrow. It's going to be a different story with him. But the Marlins, they can pitch it, but they can't hit it. The Brewers have got to get out to early leads. They are the better team than the Marlins. And when they're playing downhill, if you can balloon to a 5-1, a 6-1, a big lead against the Marlins, you can pitch downhill. You can have Topa throw two innings. You can have Suter throw two innings. You can save the guys that you do feel like you trust. You can save the Gots. The Strez Leckies. Even in a way, you've trusted Brad Boxberger a little bit more as of late. He would have had the ninth in a save situation. If the Brewers didn't get that insurance, it would have been Brad Boxberger. So they still have trust in him. But for the other guys, say the Hobie Milners, say the Gots, the Strez Leckies, Topa's in that camp as well. There are opportunities for other guys to step up in these high leverage innings to make sure it gets to Devin Williams. And let's also be clear. There is no tomorrow if you don't win today. That is the phrase this next week. Devin Williams is going to be expected to get multiple four, five out saves if the Brewers need it here down the stretch. So that makes the bullpen a little bit smaller of the requirement. There's only one more start for Woodruff, two more starts for Burns. Burns goes tomorrow, and then he'll also go in the finale of the regular season on Wednesday. You need length out of him to make sure you have the bullpen ready for the rest of it. You'll see Freddie Peralta relieve. You'll see Aaron Ashby relieve. All hands on deck in order to make the postseason. When, when it comes to seeing Matt Bush or Taylor Rogers warming up, you're going to need outs out of these guys. I'm not saying they're going to throw a full inning at times, but you're going to need outs. All you can do is support them. Taylor Rogers is going to be a free agent in a week. He's trying to audition for other teams, obviously. Matt Bush is in the organization. You might as well get behind him and root for him to figure it out, just like other pitchers have figured it out. Let him. It's been a whirlwind of a year, and it's always hard. And I'm not making an excuse, but this is an opinion here. It's always hard for somebody to go from a non-contending team for the last four years in the Texas Rangers to suddenly you are pitching the eighth inning and the margin for error is none. That's a big adjustment. And now with these solo home runs being allowed, Needs to refine a grip, needs to find an edge, needs to find something. But you will need Bush and Rodgers down the stretch, given Lauer is going to be limited today, your TBD on Saturday and Sunday, Hauser's done for the year. It's going to be all hands on deck. Don't abandon ship yet. You need these guys 
to be helpful. Maybe they don't throw the seventh and eighth inning anymore, but they're going to get you key outs if a guy goes too short. Keep that in mind down the stretch moving forward. Got to talk about Colton Wong, and let's get you ready for the Marlins here in just a second. So the Colton Wong play, a few things jump out to me about it. Why did why did Willie Glove flip that? <laughs> that was so unnecessary and so flashy, but hey, it got enough. I, it was Juan Yepes running. Willie had time, and he's so good at that shovel, right? I, I just don't get why he didn't shovel it. Colton Wong, man, didn't even need the glove. To his right, leaning back, just keeps his left toe on the bag. You knew that would have been revoot, so that was smart by him to keep his foot on the bag. And I, I wonder if they would have called the overslide rule there. Uh, I believe it was Donovan running. I wonder if they would have called the overslide rule if the Brewers would have at least asked them to look at it if the Brewers didn't get the double play. Uh, but Colton Wong, dealing with the slide coming in, dealing with a bad freed from Adamas, dealing with not really having the strongest throwing arm, an off-balance throwing away from first base, throwing accurately enough to Telez, throws low, a great scoop once again from Rowdy, double play of the year. For me, the double play of the year was between that, given the circumstance and the context of the series, and the Hobie Milner double play he turned back in San Diego. Don't forget about that one, because that was one he had to bounce off the mound to his left, spin and throw to second base. That double play was epic. So those two are my two favorites for the Brewers this year. What a play for Colton Long. If the Brewers pull this off down the stretch, that's going to be the play you circle. There's a lot of good to draw from this game. Uh, I, I look at Craig Council not being afraid to put Christian Yelich on the bench. He was 1 for 26 coming into this game. Draws a bases loaded walk. Maybe that locks him back into the zone. I don't know. One step at a time. You will need him in the final week. Uh, I didn't love pinch hitting for Keston here, given a ride he was on the mound. It turned out to work in the Brewers' favor. But Keston hasn't built up that goodwill here in September because as great as he was in August, he's been ice cold here in September. So that's why the Brewers have felt obligated to have to pinch hit for him. Uh, you look at the rest of this lineup for the Brewers. Adamas is really cooled off as of late. Uh, Rowdy obviously is cooled off, but good to see the bottom of the order providing. Victor Caratini, Tyrone Taylor, you will need them down the stretch as well. And the Brewers win the game without hitting a home run, mind you. They've hit now, they've hit the second most home runs in the National League, and they win games very rarely when they don't hit a home run. This is only the 18th time in 44 games when they hit, or they don't, or sorry, 18th time in 46 games that the Brewers win the game without hitting a home run. They are built on that. And they beat a, a left-handed starter, and they beat Jose Quintana, who's faced them 20 times. There's a lot of good to draw from this one, and Brandon Woodruff earning the win is super important as well. Let's talk briefly about the Marlins. Talked about them on Sunday. They w lost on a walk-off to the Mets uh, last night. They are 64-91. and 91. Yep, you heard that right. 64-91. and 91. The worst offense in the National League, maybe even in all of baseball. It's between them, the Nationals, and the Oakland A's. Uh, as a team, on the whole year, Miami's hitting 231. They have a sub-300 on base as a team, a sub-370 slugging as a team. That's the second-worst slugging rate in all of baseball. And just an OPS sitting at 660, also second-worst in all of baseball. They strike out a lot. They are in the top half as far as strikeouts goes. Uh, over 1,300 strikeouts. They don't hit homers. That's partially thanks to their ballpark. They have the second fewest home runs in the National League. And they've been dealing with a lot of injuries, to be fair. Jazz Chisholm's been out for most of the year. They DFA'd Jesus Aguilar. Uh, they haven't had Avi Garcia for the guy that they signed. Avi's only played in 93 games. He's hit 230 with a 316 slugging. Are Brewers, Twitters, Brewers fans still mad that the Brewers didn't re-sign him for four years, $84 million? I'm certainly glad they didn't. That's going to really, really be a, a deal that ages very poorly for the Marlins and for uh, Avi Sayil Garcia. Well, it doesn't really trend poorly for Avi Sayil Garcia. Sorry, four years, $53 million is the deal. I knew that sounded high. Four years, $53 million for Avi Garcia. Still a ton of cash for somebody who's barely played this season. He's got soft tissue issues. Not trying to drag him down, but $13.5 million a year. And uh, he's on the injured list right now. It doesn't look like he's going to be returning. Avi Garcia, uh, really tough welcome. Only seven homers this season in Miami uh, for the big former Brew Crew slugger. They haven't had a lot of production 
from Jorge Soler, who's been hurt for most of the year. He's only hitting 207. Uh, the, the, the Marlins can't hit, but man, they can pitch it. You get Braxton Garrett today, and then you'll get Sandy Alcantara tomorrow. Garrett, in case you're wondering, this season, Garrett's 3-6, and six, a 3.52 ERA. This will be his 16th start in uh, the big leagues this year. He has spent his entire career in the, My- in the Miami organization. Earlier this season, down in uh, AAA with the Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp, as I'm trying to load up the page right now, he appeared in seven games. He had a 3.15 ERA. Uh, 34 innings, 29 strikeouts, not a ton of Ks and even in the minor leagues, and obviously not a lot of Ks in the big leagues this year. In total, in 79 innings, he has about a strikeout per per inning, 81 strikeouts. Somebody that the Brewers are happy to see another lefty maybe. Maybe they stay on track facing another southpaw, somebody they haven't seen a whole lot of over the years. They need to continue to right the woes when it comes to southpaws because if they do make it into the postseason, they're going to see Jordan Montgomery. So be ready for that. Sandy Alcantara tomorrow. I had somebody tweet to me the other day, why do you still think Sandy Alcantara is the automatic slam dunk? Why is it not Julio Urias? Why is it not uh, Zach Gallant? Look, when I tell you what, here are all the categories that Sandy Alcantara is leading uh, in, in the National League for pitchers right now. Sandy Alcantara still uh, for the National League is currently in third in ERA at 2.32. He's got the third or he's got the most innings pitched in all of baseball. He's got the most complete games in all of baseball. Opponents uh I've really struggled against his changeup. He's thrown 220 innings. As of now, he's the only guy over 220 innings. Uh his whip is under 1 right now that does not lead the National League. Zach Gallen leads in that category. But Sandy Alcantara is still throwing 98 in the 8th inning. He's been the you take Sandy Alcantara away from the Marlins, they may already have 110 losses right now. He has been that good, and you get an ace off tomorrow. Don't go like seven ten first pitch tomorrow. Burns Woodruff, like you don't want to watch the Badgers. You want to watch that ace matchup in a playoff race. This is going to be so much fun tomorrow. We'll preview it a little bit more coming up uh, tomorrow for tomorrow's episode. I still got post game again today as well. Just wanted to hop in here and just look real quick as I end this episode. Half game back with seven to go. That's real. If the Brewers do flip the Phillies, Phillies have lost four in a row in eight of their last 12. If the Brewers flip the Phillies tonight, don't get too high and mighty because it can flip right back tomorrow. The Phillies have a double header coming up on Saturday. It is far from over. One day at a time, one inning at a time. It sounds like there's a little more life in that dugout now, a little more life in the clubhouse. Colton Wong's post-game interview was a lot of fun. They're not afraid of anybody. Uh, I love Brandon Woodruff's talk after the game as well. He loves pitching in September, and he's going to get the ball on Monday against the Diamondbacks. <sighs> it feels good to care about the game right now. One more week. Stay with us. Let's have a lot of fun. I got post-game tonight. Hope you tune in on WTMJ. I have another episode of Lockdown Brewers waiting for you first thing in the morning. I'm Dominic Catronio. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time, keep on swinging.